What's up y'all, welcome back to Fish the Moment. Today I'm in my office preparing for another Catch 15 challenge. What I want to show you today is how I use Google Earth and Navionics to find fishing areas before I go to the lake. Let's get into it. Here's a look at Kerr Reservoir in Oklahoma, not to be confused with the Kerr Reservoir on the East Coast. This lake is a shallow, muddy lake that's part of the Arkansas River. The clearest water I've ever found in this lake is maybe two foot of visibility, so we're going to be dealing with shallow, muddy water fishing. This means I'm probably not going to be catching too many fish offshore, and even if I was going to catch some fish offshore, it would take a lot of extra search time and probably wouldn't be worth it if I'm only fishing for eight hours with no practice. Therefore, I'm going to try to find some shallow water areas in this lake using Google Earth before I get to the lake, and I'm also going to be using some Navionics mapping as well to give you guys an idea of the shallow water areas that I would pick out before going to the lake. I'm going to pull up all the pins that I actually dropped here before I started this video, and you can see all the different areas that I picked out. I'm going to explain one by one why these areas are effective and also my decision making in why I choose these many spots in these areas, so on and so forth. So the first thing to call out is that if we look at the highest level here on Google Earth, you'll notice that my waypoints are grouped up on the lower end of Kerr Reservoir. The lake is pretty big and it stretches all the way up to the next dam up here. So there's plenty of water to fish that is to the west of where I dropped all my waypoints. You can also go further back in some of these backwater areas as well. The reason I didn't actually choose to go further back into these backwaters or further up the lake is because, again, I only have eight hours of fish with no practice. What this means is that every minute that I spend driving the boat around is going to take away from my fishing time. And when you're fishing up shallow, the name of the game is making as many casts as possible. Therefore, if I have to spend 15 or 20 minutes idling into a backwater back in here and then maybe not find anything and then idle 20 or 30 minutes back out, I've just wasted an hour to an hour and a half of my fishing day and my lure wasn't even in the water. Now this is fine if you're graphing offshore because you're eliminating the water with your fish finder. However, when you're idling back into a backwater or trying to navigate a sketchy uh, bayou like this and you're just idling, you're not being effective at all because all I'm trying to do is just drive my boat over to a stretch of grass or whatever it is and I'm literally just wasting time. Therefore, I need to find areas that are easily accessible to me where I can basically just run my boat straight over to them and also areas that are close enough to where I'm going to be launching. The launch for this week is actually going to be right here. So it's going to be right in this area or maybe right here, one of these spots over here we're going to be launching. And that means I want to keep my spots pretty close to the boat ramp. I also want to find areas that are easily accessible to a main creek channel. A lot of these backwaters back in here, for example, are super sketchy and shallow, and I would have to idle these old river channels and creek channels to get over to them because I just don't want to tear up my boat. I don't know Kerr Reservoir very well at all, so I don't really know how to navigate it. So even running this main channel up here could be a little bit sketchy. Therefore, what I'm going to plan to do is focus on areas that are easily accessible by an obvious creek channel. These banks down here by this main river channel here. Maybe some of these backwater areas in here where you have a nicer defined creek channel. I also have fished in this creek before, so I kind of know how to navigate it as well. And then also some areas that are just right off the main buoy markers. You can see you have a red and a green buoy right here. That's how on these river style lakes, they mark the creek channel. So I'm basically trying to find areas that I can easily navigate to. So now that I've kind of determined that I want to fish on the lower end of the lake, the next thing I need to do is start establishing some different areas in the lake where I want to actually start fishing. And in general, when I'm fishing up shallow, I like to have a minimum of five different sections or areas on the lake that I want to fish. This is because the fish aren't always going to be set up very well and catchable in every single area. For example, this backwater here might not be any good that I fish there. Maybe this little stretch off the main river, the fish aren't there because the current's too strong. Maybe back in this backwater, there's 75 fishermen and it's just covered up in boats and I can't get anywhere on the spot. So I need to make sure I have a variety of areas to sample when I'm on the water. So if we take a look at kind of the areas I picked out, we have an area up here that's one, second area right here is two, three, maybe you can count this area here, so it's like three, four, 
five, six. I've picked six different areas or sections of this lake to target. This gives me a lot of variety, and hopefully if I can find even one of those sections that has fish in it, I can milk that area for five keeper bites. That's kind of the goal. So now that we've kind of established the general zones I'm going to be fishing, let's get into the nitty gritty of what I'm actually looking for. And whenever I'm fishing on a shallow, muddy lake that's connected to a river system or part of the Arkansas River like this, and I'm fishing in late August, the three types of cover I'm really focused on is water willow grass, some sort of riprap or rock that has deep water close by, or lily pads. And I'll walk through all of those step by step with you here. Let's start with the water willow grass. And I'm actually going to pull up this example over here because this is a really great example. If we take a look right here, this is just a little shipping bay, shipping area here, and we have some water willow grass that's showing up. You can see this water willow on the bank setting up right here. It's just this shallow grass, and I'm going to fish this most likely with a swim jig, a buzz bait, or a shallow uh, topwater frog. So I'm going to basically just power fish this grass. I might flip it with a jig as well if it's really thick. We also have some water willow grass over here that looks equally as good if you just kind of look at it in Google Earth here. The one thing though that I found about water willow grass over the years, especially growing up fishing on the Arkansas River, some of you guys don't know, I used to be a river rat where I used to fish the Arkansas River more than anything else, and I used to be pretty good at fishing shallow water back in the day. But for now, I'm not as, uh, as skilled at it. So what I'm going to plan on doing is just focus on the key stretches that I can identify on Google Earth and not try to rely on my old instincts. The way I do this is I actually use the time function on Google Earth Pro. If you don't know how to uh, get this time wheel or this time uh, bar to show up, what you need to do is actually download Google Earth Pro on a desktop or laptop computer. I have a full video that I'll link right here and down in the description below that explains how to download Google Earth Pro and how to actually go back in time using these features. But basically, we're gonna we're currently looking at an image uh, that if you look at the imagery date down here, it's from October 5th, 2013. This means that this grass is probably still somewhat healthy given the fact that it's October. It hasn't really died out yet, hasn't really got that cold. So what I want to do is actually go back in time to a point in March. This image was taken March 24th, 2012. Whenever you go back to an earlier part of the year, especially in the winter time, a lot of the water willow grass will die out. So if we take a look up here where I have the bad water willow up here, you can see there's no more grass right here. If we go up uh, even one year further, again back to that 10, 5, 20, 13, in October there's grass here, but if we go back to March, there's no grass there. That's because that grass isn't very strong, it's not very sturdy or healthy. This is really tough to fish because really that grass is only there for half the year and it's a lot less likely to hold a good group of fish or even just fish in general. On the flip side, if we go down further to the grass we marked down here, you can actually see that in March this water willow grass is still showing up. You can still see that water willow right there. And if we go back to October here, you can see that the grass is really healthy. So when it's fully grown, it grows out really well. But even in March, when it's at the coldest of time of the year, the grass has not started growing yet, water temperatures are still in the 40s and 50s, you can still see that there's grass in the area. This means this is a strong growth of grass. There's probably some hard bottom down there, and it's going to be a really solid place to hold fish. And this will hold fish year round, honestly, this type of grass. I'll catch them in February and March on this type of grass, and you'll also catch them throughout the rest of the year when it gets warmer. So what I basically did with the water willow is I went around and basically just picked this area of the lake down here, this whole area, and I tried to find every single stretch of water willow that was alive in March on Google Earth. So we take a look right here. Here's a nice stretch of grass off the main lake. You can see the grass is still there growing up in March. In October, it's a lot thicker. This is probably what it's going to look like when I get to the lake, but I can at least identify that it's still a good, solid grouping of grass because it's there even in the colder months. Same thing right here, another good stretch of water willow that will look better when we get to the lake. You can see this water willow over here is kind of just seasonal versus this, which is actually there year-round. We want the year-round grass. Kept going down, kind of went to different areas, found more water willow in the mouth of this creek. You can see in March, 
really good growth right here, right here, and right here. And when we get to October, it looks even better. So I basically did that. I'm not going to go through every single spot just to kind of save some time, but I went around, um, did the same thing over here, um, back in the back of this creek, back in here, found a bunch of different living water willow in March. So that was kind of my plan initially. So I have water willow marked out all over the lake over here, here, up around the way. And I even have one patch of water willow that's alive up here. And you actually can't see it very well in this image, but if we go back one more year to another March, let's see here, there was another March recording in here, right there. You can see that there's a little bit of grass right there still growing. This was 2014 in March. So sometimes the grass doesn't grow perfect every single year, but basically, that was the only stretch of living water willow in March in this entire creek. So usually when you can find that, and this is the only stretch of water willow in this entire creek, probably is going to hold some fish, and that might be a little sweet spot for me. We'll see in the video when I get out there. So that's basically the water willow pattern. The next pattern that I wanted to figure out is some areas that might have some riprap or rocky banks that are near deeper water. So we'll kind of give you some ideas of this. I'm going to try to get... Um, Google Earth and not look terrible because some of these images are a little bit wonky. They kind of sketch or uh, stitch together a bunch of random uh, images. So sometimes it looks a little bit weird. But anyways, uh, here's a couple spots that I picked out that I said basically were rock. And there's a lot of rock on this lake, but not all rock on these shallow muddy lakes are created equal. Here we have basically a man-made jetty that sticks out to protect this pier or whatever it is that harbor there there's also some nice rock down the back side of this and on the front side of this so i kind of just marked rock but i might fish the entire area and if we pull up navionics you can see that this area is really special in the sense that this main river channel this white area right here butts up right against i mean right against that little jetty there's that jetty right there and here it is right there and that creek channel runs right in front of it and also another creek channel runs this way. So it actually has a creek channel on the back side and on the front side. That is incredible because it's going to bring in a lot of bait fish. It's going to basically be a migration route for these fish. The fish that are on the main river are going to have to go around this jetty using this creek channel to get back into the back of the creek if they want to set up there in the uh, later in the fall, maybe into uh, into the winter. So I'm trying to find areas that are kind of at these intersection points. And that's one other thing I didn't really talk about with the water willow. The water willow I did pick was mainly more towards the mouth of the creeks because we are fishing in August. And in August, usually those fish are either going to be out near the main lake or they're transitioning into the first thirds of the creek. So all the water willow spots you see me picking are more towards the mouth of the creek as opposed to water willow that's way back in the back of the creeks. I would look for areas back in here if I was fishing in October or November while our temperatures are cooler. But since we're going in August, I want to find the water willow that's more towards the main part of the lake. Sorry for not mentioning that earlier. Now, with the rock, what I basically did was go around the lake and I tried to find sections of rock that butted up right against a main channel. So here's another rocky point that sticks out here. This is actually a natural rocky point. And if we take a look at this one on Navionics, we come back down here. Here is that rocky point, and I mean, it drops off sharp, just straight into that channel, 30 foot coming up into shallower water, and another creek channel running right by it. So basically, you have a creek channel that then splits off. This could be a potentially awesome area if there's bait fish pulled up there and things like that. If we count up all the pins that I marked, there are about 20 spots here, and I only expect to get bit on three or four of the stretches I've actually marked. There's a few reasons for that. One, some of these areas just might not be very good. They could be blown out by recent rains, or maybe the water quality in there isn't very good. There's a lot of reasons why these spots might not be good. And there also might be a lot of fishing pressure when I go to the lake. I try to fish on Fridays, Saturdays, or Sundays when there's as much fishing pressure as possible for these Catch 15 videos to make them as realistic as possible. So for example, I might pull into this creek, and there might be six guys who are just beating these banks to death, and I won't be able to maybe get as many bites out of them just because they're getting so much fishing pressure. Therefore, I try to get as many different spots as possible just in case I can't get on these spots or they're not very good. I also try to mark a variety of each type of area. So for example, I have a nice rocky stretch here. 
I've marked another rocky stretch back in the back of this creek that's kind of at this inflection point where you kind of have a bridge. There's actually a culvert that these fish can swim through back in here. You can see it a little bit right there. And so these fish can swim through this culvert, and as they transition, they might set up right here at this rock. Uh, another spot that I marked is another just rocky point over here that's right by a creek channel. And I might also notice other spots when I'm just running down the lake that I didn't see on Google Earth. But at least I have four or five rocky spots. I have seven or eight, maybe nine water willow stretches. And if I get on a pattern, I can run more areas that are similar to that. And hopefully I can get on a third of them even and catch fish. So that's kind of my plan here. And another thing I want to call out is that I don't expect to only fish these 20 areas. This is just a starting point for me. And it gives me a little bit of an idea of where I could potentially fish. However, I might get off on a completely different pattern that's not rocks, water willow, or paths when I get to the lake. Maybe I'm fishing main lake laydowns or something like that. So I'm not just going to go to the lake with these spots in mind and just run every single one of these spots. Instead, I'm going to use them as a little bit of information that gives me an idea of where maybe some better water willow stretches are or maybe where there is a little bit more uh, rock than other places. But I'm not going to stick to these spots exactly. Also, I'm not going to just fish 20 areas. When I fish up shallow, I like to run a lot of little stretches. I might run 30 different spots over the course of my fishing day. Now, I'm not going to basically pull in here and fish the entire bank. I'm not going to fish down this entire creek all the way to the back. I'm going to focus on small little sections of bank, and I'm going to fish them very thoroughly, especially when you're fishing here in August. My plan is that I'm going to get back into a creek, for example, like this, and there might be a little bit of water willow like right around this point or right in this um, little pocket here, and I might just fish this stretch from here to here, which is maybe 30, 40 yards. I'll fish it very thoroughly, fishing every inch of it for you know, 20 minutes, just this one stretch, then I'll move on. And if I do that three different times an hour, that gives me, you know, three spots per hour fishing them for 20 minutes. And if I have eight hours, I'm hopefully going to be fishing 24 to 30 spots, depending on how fast I can get through them all. So even though I've marked 20 spots here, I'm hoping to fish that many spots at a minimum, if not more. Now, the last type of area that I found that I thought was kind of interesting is this little area up here where there's some lily pads. And I absolutely love fishing lily pads. It's probably one of my top five favorite ways to fish, though there are not very many areas with, with lily pads uh, in my area of the country now. I have to go like two or three hours south or north or east or west or a bunch of different directions to get to lily pads. This is like the only lake with lily pads that's within an hour and a half of the house. And... If we take a look right here, you can see a nice stretch of lily pads that's sticking out. And the reason that these pads really struck my eye is that, well, one, they're the only lily pads that are kind of in the mouth of a major creek or at least not way back in a crazy backwater back in here. And that makes them a lot more accessible to me. But also, if we take a look at this area on a Navionics map, and we scroll over here, you can actually see that there is a nice drop-off right in here is where those pads are and they drop off sharply into 15 foot of water. There's even a little bit of a ditch that curves in here. This means that there's going to be a deeper edge to those pads than most places. And in August, that is absolutely critical when fishing pads. If these pads are growing out really well this year and they can grow out all the way to the edge of this drop, I can guarantee you I'm gonna catch some fish out of these pads flipping a big jig or maybe throwing a frog and it could be game on. The challenge is that these pads are not always going to be here. Uh, depending on the rain and the water levels and stuff, these pads may have been washed out. They may not be there at all. So I'm not going to bank on the pads, but it's definitely going to be something that I'm going to keep in mind. So really that gives me three options, rock, water willow, or pads. And I only have eight hours to fish, and I have confidence in all three of those patterns, so I'm just going to stick with those, and I'm not going to try to go off the wall too much. I may try to fish some like uh, dock pilings or maybe some big laydowns if I see something that looks really nice, just for a couple of minutes. But in general, I want to stick to those three types of structure, or uh, three types of cover, the rock, the wire wheel, the pads, because that's what I have a lot of confidence in, and that's what I want to spend at least 80% of my day doing. One other thing I did think about doing, though, is if we go back into the back of this creek here, 
there's an area that looks, looks really intriguing, and I guarantee you this is where Randy would be fishing if we were on this challenge together and he was fishing uh, with me. He would probably be going all the way back, past all the stuff that I've marked, way back into the back of this creek here. And why would he go into this creek specifically? Well, basically, if we take a look at this creek over here, you can see that there's a nice big creek arm, but the water is pretty dingy. You can see the water visibility here is maybe anywhere from... Uh, like you can see, this is pretty clear water. This is someone's pond. This might have two foot of visibility versus six inches of visibility. But if we come over here to this other little creek arm, you'll notice that that water has a lot better clarity to it. it. Probably has a foot and a half, maybe two foot of visibility. Has some vegetation back there. And I guarantee you there is a group of fish somewhere from the mouth of this creek all the way to the back of this creek somewhere. And Randy is an absolute genius at figuring out how to catch fish in these little creeks like this. I am not though, and one thing I know is that to get back in this creek, I'm going to have to run all the way to basically where these pads are, and because I've been in this creek before, I'm going to have to idle from here, and there's trees everywhere back in here, I'm going to have to idle from here all the way back, all the way back here, find my way through all of this, I don't know which path leads the best to the back of this creek, there's no uh, contour lines or anything back in here, it might be like this way, or maybe it's this way, but I have to find my way back into this creek. And then once I'm back in there, I have a thousand targets to fish. I have to fish every laydown, every piece of grass, everything like that. And it's just a huge time sink. Now, if I had a practice day for Kerr Reservoir and I could go out there for, let's say, three, four hours before we fish this, uh, this fishing trip, I might be able to go waste three or four hours driving back in here, going around, looking at this creek, and seeing if there's fish in there, because it does look like a great area. But it's too big of a risk when I only have eight hours of fish and no practice. I basically would be wasting half my day trying to get back in here, fishing this thoroughly, and if there are no fish in there, now I only have four hours to try to fish everything else. And knowing my skills up shallow, four hours is probably not going to be enough to put a limit of fish for 15 pounds in the boat out on all these other areas. So I really need to maximize my time. I need all eight hours and probably try to have my lure in the water for seven and a half of those eight hours if possible, or maybe at least seven, like minimizing the amount of time I'm running, maximizing the amount of time my lure is in the water. And I'll go into what baits I'm throwing and everything like that in a separate video where I prep my tackle. So definitely stay tuned for that. I'll talk about the baits I'm gonna throw, all that stuff. But basically this is my overall strategy for my catch 15 challenge on Kerr Reservoir in Oklahoma. Again, this is Oklahoma on the Arkansas River. This is not the one over on the East Coast. So should be an interesting challenge. It's kind of getting me back in my shallow water game. The reason I picked this lake in particular is because I want to force myself to fish shallow because I feel like as we get into the fall here, I'm going to need to adapt and fish both shallow and and fish offshore to be successful in these catch 15 challenges. Right now we're in the middle of the summer and the offshore fish are out there. It's gonna be, you know, it's relatively easy to catch fish offshore in the summertime. And that's why I've had two really good challenges where I've completed the challenge. But as we get into the fall, fish are gonna start transitioning back into the creeks, back into the coves, and they're going to get onto shallow water targets. While there are going to be fish offshore, maybe only 30 to 40% of them will be out there. So I'm going to have to mix it up and do a little bit of shallow, a little bit of offshore. And so to kind of ease me into that, I'm just going to do the offshore, or I'm going to fish shallow water only on Kerr Reservoir. Go back to my old Arkansas River, river rat techniques, and hopefully catch 15 pounds of fish. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed, and hopefully you learned something about how I prep for this tournament day or this uh, catch 15 challenge day. It's my own personal tournament. It's not really an actual tournament and uh, other than that guys definitely subscribe to the fish moment channel if you want to see all of the upcoming videos my tackle prep as well as my fishing day and see how i take this plan and put it into action so thanks again for checking out the video and we'll see you on the next one